after the 97 win um, against Florida State right here in the swamp. The gold post. In the gold post. Yeah. And he's uh -huh. over there like, come on, come on. <laughs> tear it come down, on, let's yeah. tear it down. <laughs> and you got all these cops. You got all these cops with all these German him. shepherds standing there. He's like, come on, come join him. And he's like, the way he's been over, if somebody can find that picture, come on, let's knock it down. We've got it. The sun has it. Oh, sun man. I remember we ran it. We need to frame like that. Do you remember pregame? There at Auburn that year, he had Wiley Rich uh, say the prayer before the pregame meal. Oh, I, I saw your tweet on this. Please. Wiley Wiley stands up there, and I mean it was it it hey country boy. It was, it, yeah, from uh, out of Latchfield, yeah. Santa Fe, uh, Lord, and you know it was real short, and I don't even want to say sweet. It was real short and and heartfelt. We'll put it that way. And Spur and he goes, Amen. And Spur he goes. Amen, Wiley. Amen. And then he looks at him and he goes, Hey, Wiley, you know, just because they're both plaid doesn't mean they match. <laughs> like, I mean, like, it seems like so in the same breath as Amen. That is so classic. Oh. So I had a, an Alcorn State game uh, beginning of the year against Georgia Tech. And Jay Hopkins, uh, the head coach there, was a GA uh, for Spurrier in the early 90s. And I said, you know, do our, our coaches call our interview with him? And I said, Hey, coach, before we let you go, Gotta get your best Spurrier story. And he gave me a new one that I hadn't heard. And it was, uh, he went, and a couple other coaches went with Coach Spurrier to a Jaguars practice. Tom Coughlin, uh, you know, mini camp or something like that. And Coughlin made all the coaches stand in this little box they had painted on the field. And it made Spurrier so mad. And he's like, I can't believe him making a stand right here. This, you know, this head ball coach making put, put me in the square. Well, two days later on, a couple months later that summer, Tim Mingy, who's a great guy, scout uh, there for the Jaguars for a long time. He comes to practice, uh -oh. watch the Gators, and he, uh, he he makes him go stand in the circle underneath the tree. He goes, <laughs> yeah, you tell Coach Coughlin, I can make you guys stand where I want to, too. <laughs> oh, but we used to. That is so what, sweet. Well, great. I know, it's like you got him back. But one, we used to, so as, as 96 kind of, you know, as we really started getting better and better towards the end of the year, and Danny was going to win the Heisman yeah. and, and kind of it was building up, building up, building up. We'd walk the strip from South End Zone up around the O-Dome over to the practice field and uh, and there started to be, you know, quite a few autograph seekers, you know, getting Danny's autograph on helmets and stuff like that. He didn't like, like that. that, did he? No, he didn't. And, and one day he finally had enough and he called us all around after we stretched before practice. And he goes, yeah, Danny? rest of you guys when, when you're walking out and, and they're out there trying to get those autographs you can say hi to them but you don't have to sign their autographs you don't have to do that he goes uh you know what they do when they get your autograph don't you danny they go to the mall and they, and they sell it they sell your autograph and they get money danny and he pauses for a second and goes and you know what they do with the money when when they get it after they sell your autograph they buy drugs <laughs> and then he stops and he goes oh hell maybe they don't but they could <laughs> <laughs> but uh but so so my whole like when I was in junior high I was in in Texas and the boss was doing his thing at OU so all I ever wanted to do was wear 44 and, yeah and just make plays like the boss I mean that was all I ever thought about yeah. so I had to wear 44 it's almost embarrassing how much it meant to me like <laughs> as soon as I would get a media guide when I was being recruited I quick flip through and okay, Fee Bartley's a senior. That means I can get 44 next year. You know, I'm like, <laughs> had he been a freshman, I'd be like, mm, I don't know if I want to go to Florida. <laughs> and so, so I had my 44. You know, like feeling good. My red shirt freshman year, I think it is. Um, Daryl Bush, great high school linebacker from Lake Brantley, All American. He comes in on his recruiting trip, and I'm his host. I think I've heard this one actually. Mm -hmm. This is a good one. <laughs> and and so uh, we do our thing. Friday, Friday night, Saturday morning, we meet down in the in the locker room. And at the time, I don't think you can do it anymore. But at the time, they would take the the numbers that the kids wore in high school, and they would make a nameplate Bush in this case, and, and put it on their high school number. Well, there in the locker is is my 44 jersey with Bush on the back. You know, that's fine. That's what they do. And we're walking around, standing in front of it, looking at it, and, and it's Daryl and his mom and dad, and you know maybe somebody else from his family. And we're standing there. Here comes Coach Spurrier. And he goes, yeah, well, it looks good. looks good, Daryl. Shoot. And, uh, and Daryl's mom looks at him and says, Daryl's worn 44 his whole life, and he plans on wearing it in college. 
<laughs> and he goes, Batesy, you wear 44, don't you? Yes, sir. You feel like giving it up? <laughs> no, sir. He looks back at his mom and he says, well, guess he won't be wearing 44 if he's a gator. <laughs> I'm like, oh, and that's him, man. He like, yeah, takes care of his guys. He does. That's but true. I was nervous. Like, I hadn't contributed that much. I thought much. he was going to make you give him up. Yeah. Give it up. Yeah. And think about me. There are a lot of... There are a lot of people. I mean, I like Urban Meyer a lot, but there's there's a good chance that Urban looks at, back at James yeah. Bates as a red shirt freshman and says, Bates, well, looks like you're going to have to earn that number back. You know, if he goes, ah, you know? That would be yeah. like him. That would be like him. Oh, man. So, oh, That's God. That's great. Right to his mom's <laughs> face. Uh, won't be wearing it here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then a couple, a couple years ago, we were doing for Fox Sports South, Get them in their media days. You know how they, they in this room, out this yeah. room, in this room. Yeah. And and before we do an interview with them, they have them read a few lines, you know, for all their promos. You're watching Fox Sports South. You know, like, <laughs> Coach, if you would, please look right into the lens and just say, this is head coach Steve Spurrier. This is head coach Steve Spurrier, South Carolina. You're watching Fox Sports South. And so, and he goes, all right, Fox. Uh, he goes, all right. He goes, you're watching Fox uh, South Sport. I'll oh, shoot. And, and he, and he kind of like messed that one up a couple times. He goes, no, nah, no, nah, I can't do that one. That, that one's too hard. I'm not going to do that one. I'm not, I'm not doing that one. <laughs> and those that have been able to, it's, you look over the years, those that have been able to kind of kind of ride with them like, like Danny, that can, that can handle him, you know, shoulders up type of thing. He's made great. I'm Connor Shaw's another one. Yeah. It's uh, I've really enjoyed getting to know some of his South Carolina guys, like Connor Shaw, mm -hmm. because we compare stories. Hey, does he still tell you guys you're using the F word too much? Oh yeah, during training camp, right here. Yeah, you guys using the F word too much. An occasional hell damn or shit's all right. Just don't use that F word. <laughs> we are. I mean, shoot, we might have been number one in the nation, or what were we? We were up there, top five. I think we both yeah. were probably top five in the nation, and it was the bye week. And you know how Spurrier loves Crescent Beach, and. And he made all the coaches go over there the bye weekend, the week the weekend they had off before Tennessee. And uh, and they're out floating in the ocean. You know, coach goes, Oh, better go out to the other. Come on, come on out of here. And they're all sitting out there and, and, and to hear Stoops tell it and say, uh, he looks over at him and says, Bobby, how many of those Tennessee coaches you think are floating in the ocean right now? <laughs> <laughs> and no one that I mean, you know what? Then fast forward a week later. And he's going for it on the opening drive in the rain at midfield on fourth down, throwing a touchdown. I mean, it's like I know. How'd you like to and be going worked. up against that? I know. You know, I mean, that's that's what that's what swagger is. Yeah. I mean, every Monday, here we are, first meeting of the week. Um, go in, it's the whole team meeting, and, and one coach would get up there and kind of break down our opponent. You know, this is what we're looking at. This is what they do. Uh, sometimes they do it a little differently, a little bit of history of the school or, or coaches or whatever. Every now and then, uh, coach would get up there and say, well, they have his favorite by 20. Oh, shoot, we'll beat him by about four or five touchdowns, won't we? And it's like, I mean, like, you know, not that, not for any betting purposes. It's yeah. just like, what are they thinking? Oh, shoot, they're way off. It was so much fun uh, that it was, and so funny that it was almost like, you know, had you been a, uh, Oh, like like an intern or something on Saturday Night Live, you know, during the Belushi years, or Eddie Murphy, and just sit back there and just like, oh man, you believe that, you believe that, and and the sad thing is, there are so many stories, and they just kind of like, I'll go through phases where I forget a bunch of them, but then they come back. It's like you know, good jokes. It's like, oh man, I need I need to tell this joke, and and, and I, everybody, I'm I'm sure all the Spurrier stories they know, they know some good ones, but they've forgotten. Just you know, tons, just, just as yeah. many, uh, because it's, it's almost every time he opens up his mouth. And uh, oh man, and, and you know, and, and I think really the maybe the silver lining, if there is any, because it's it was a tough day to be a Gator yesterday. Mm -hmm. You know, with with uh, Will Greer and, and all that going down, and, and everything's just riding so high uh, in Gainesville, and then boom, take that big hit, and you go through that, and then just when you kind of catch your breath after that, you hear that. The head ball coach is stepping down immediately. I said, "Well, wait a minute. We didn't get a chance to, you know, kind of like let him ride off, ride his golf cart off into the sunset, <laughs> you know." And but I, the one good thing I think that does come of it is the fact that you don't have to hear any more negativity. I mean, it's 
he knows that they, they weren't playing good football right now. And and that hurt to see him, you know, not not succeed against teams that he's used to beating and, and used to playing good football against. And so um, that was rough because any time the South Carolina played football, and even against the Gators, it was tough to root against him. Um, I wanted my Gators to win, but, you know, I'd be lying if I didn't say when they came in with Marcus Lattimore in the swamp and he's putting on his windbreaker. Oh no, they're going to dump ice on me. You know, I was like, I, I felt good for him. Well, you know, and he had it all all planned out. Well, I guess a few Gamecocks get out alive too every now and then, shoot. And, you know, I just, I, I love the guy and, and I want him to do so well. And so when the last couple of weeks as people are starting to say, oh, he's got to go, he's got to go. You know, they got to, they got to make a change. No, you, how can you say that? You know, I mean, look what he did for the University of Florida, mm -hmm. but what he did at South Carolina, I mean, everything as a program, really, they owe to him and where he has taken them. So that kind of hurt. I, I didn't love watching that, and I was hoping that he could kind of hang on because I don't know the exact number, but I know he was getting pretty close to 100 wins here and there. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not mistaken, nobody's ever done that. And you know how he is, so competitive. I mean, that's obviously something that he would have loved to have to have reached a, a milestone. And um, But what seemed to be like, hey, if they keep doing what they're doing, it's two seasons. And then it's three, and then it's four. So it's like, you know, so it's kind of tough. But, um, oh, just uh, that's my guy. And that's and that's, that's a lot of people's, a lot of people's guys. He, he was different in the sense that, you know, you, you think of like the, the Woody Hayes of the world, the, the Bo Schembechlers and, you know, Bear Bryant's for that matter, the whole fire and brimstone, and let's do this for your family and, and anybody that's ever come before you. And that's the one thing you didn't get from him was that whole raw, raw, let's go kick their asses, man. You know, like that. you never, ever got that, but you got everything else. So, he's, you know, you can't have it all. And... The, the motivation that you got from him was the whole, you didn't want him kind of picking at you and, and, and whining at you. So it's like, <laughs> you didn't want it, it to be you when he said, shoot, it's not their fault. It's our fault for putting them in there. You know, you didn't want that him to be talking about you at that point. But like he, you on game day, when you get kind of closer to, to kickoff, one, one tradition that he always had, he'd go walking around the locker room and he'd shake everybody's hand, you know. All right, all right, Batesy. Let's get him ready to go. Get him going over there. All right, Jeff. All right, Danny. All right. All right, my man. And he, he, he hit one of the guys. You know, there are a lot of guys out there, and he doesn't know maybe the, the backup snapper or something like that. All right, my man. And it was just so funny. So it was never like, oh, oh, let's go play. Let's go play big time football. It's like you're just kind of like <laughs> waiting. And, oh, man. But, uh, yeah, and then he'd have Ric Flair around, and you know, oh, I mean, right. that was that was his guy. Ric Flair would come around, or or we'd be out in at practice, and and Paige Beck of TV Twenty be standing out there, and it's like, Paige, come here, hey guys, this is Paige Beck TV Twenty, she wants to talk to you, and Paige didn't want to talk to us, um, guys, uh, hey, we're really proud of you in town, you know, like, let's do it for Paige Beck, and you know, and I actually watched TV Twenty last er, this morning. And they were never doing a report, I swear. And the lower third said, the lower third said, you know, here, showing all these shots of Spurrier over the years, and the lower third said, he really liked Paige Beck. <laughs> <laughs> he brought his, uh, his big boom box. Um, we were number one in the nation. When we played Auburn, would it, Robbie, would it have been 94? 94. 94. Yeah. Here. Right here, yep. And uh, You were favored by 16, I think. Really? Was <laughs> Auburn ranked? Yeah. They were undefeated, but I, I think they were like 18th or something like that. Okay. And so, uh, so you know, we go to a movie the night before the game, and then we come back in to the hotel, a little conference room, and we have a you know team meeting before we go get snack and go to bed. And he's standing up there. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got this boom box, and he doesn't know how to work. He's like, yeah, well, she's got a big one tomorrow. And, you know, Jerry, his wife, he's, Jerry, she, she's listening to this song. She played it for me. And, I think you guys need to hear this. I think this would be a good song you guys listen to before we go play Auburn tomorrow. Coach Dixon, how do I do this? And he's always out there trying to push buttons and stuff like that. And so we're all waiting. And so, you know, I mean, this 90% of our team's from South Florida, and they're yeah. listening to Jam Pony and Uncle Luke and stuff like that. And, you know, country music is not what not they listen fly, to. Okay? No. And he finally gets play going, and it's Little Texas 
kick a little. You've got to kick a little. Do, 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 do. And they never even said ass. It's just like, you got to kick a little because it's tough. And he's up there like tapping his foot. And Cresser sitting next it. to me, Eric Cresser, and he's jamming me in the ribs. And he's standing right there. And I'm just crying, I'm crying laughing. So needless to say, we got our butts kicked the next day. And, you know, but then he gave, uh, we didn't have it as bad as a... Uh, Right before he left, he played I Hope You Dance. I oh, yeah. know, my God. That was just like, oh, my God. Yeah, when they beat You guys song, need to listen to this when they beat, That became a theme song at the end. They played it on the PA system after the game. It was like, oh, my God. No, really? Yeah. How oh. could the players relate to that? Oh, man. I, I hope you dance. All right, Danny. I hope you dance today. All right, my man. It was at, at halftime of a game when I was getting ready. I was doing sideline reporting. I was getting ready to interview him. Oh, so you weren't playing? No, 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 no. So we're getting ready. We're getting ready. All right, coach, one second. We're, okay, we're getting ready to go here, coach. And he goes, Batesy, when we do this thing, you don't have to put your arm around me like all those other guys do. You're fine. You don't have to. You don't have to. <laughs> like all those other guys do. Yeah, that's. Oh, man. He's kind of picky about that, being touched. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he needs the space. Uh huh. Yeah, he, um, uh, <laughs> well, he's got space now. He can go stroll up and down the yeah, beach. He's free. Back in East Tennessee, and so that was kind of cool that he was a mm -hmm. uh, uh, that I w was from East Tennessee as well. Went to high school in in, in Sevier County, uh, and so he thought that was kind of neat to have another East Tennessee guy. And I was fortunate because they really didn't recruit that many guys from out of state at the time. And uh, you know, it was. My mom wanted me to go to Tennessee, and we called my mom. I, I remember I told all that. Him, you know, sitting in his office. Let's call her up. Let's tell him. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, like, she hangs up on me, and he's like, all right, shoot. And then he comes to my house about a month later, still on an at-home visit. And I went and met him at the curb. I'm like, Coach, listen, <laughs> you're going into enemy territory now. This is, it's, it's been a little rough ever since my commitment. Ah, shoot. You know, he just thinks he can win everybody over. <laughs> he goes in there, sits down, and he goes, well, we're happy to have James be a gator. <laughs> and my mom looked him in the eye and says, I'm not. If it were up to me, you wouldn't be sitting in my living room right there. <laughs> so, so we got a little extra <laughs> food. Oh. But, not afraid to bark at the dog. <laughs> no. No. And, you know, and, and I remember my, my recruiting trip, like it was yesterday, standing in the tunnel and, and him telling the little group uh, – it was with us there. I, I think Odom was in on that. Uh, Jason Odom was in on that uh, recruiting trip, and and uh, and Danny, a couple guys, and he, he told that was us a great class. Oh, it was a great class. It was you know we were number one in the nation, and we finished up that way, which rarely happens, you know. It's uh, but he uh, we're standing there getting ready to come out of the door, and he's like, yeah, you know. Clemson, LSU, they got their Death Valleys. We're thinking about calling this a swamp. All the Gators get out alive. And uh, <laughs> then we walked out there, and you know, he's like, kind of explained it to us. He's like, yeah, well, they told me, uh, uh, we promised the, uh, we promised all the Letterman, we'll never change this block F right here. Big you F know, in yeah, the middle, yeah. F. That was that was pretty big for him. <laughs> but oh man. What about the time he let you wear a pumpkin for a helmet at practice on Halloween? Do you remember? Oh, he that? didn't let me. I, I mean, but I remember you went to the whole thing. practice wearing a pumpkin on yeah, your head. Yeah, uh, well, it was around Halloween time, and there were pumpkins around, and you know, I always got to kind of tinker and stuff like that. And, um, you know, and, it and so hilarious. it was kind of a lot of that stuff I was able to get away with because he was on the offensive bus, and so our defensive yeah. bus was just a mess. I mean, we'd get on there and rock the mic, and we'd do, we'd, you know, do Spurrier impersonations and make fun of somebody if they got in trouble that week, and, you know, and, and so we would, we would rock the mic is, is what they would call it, rock the mic on, on the bus on the way to games, and Ernie Batto, uh, he, he got in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, I remember that. I, I was uh, away at my dad's training camp with the Cleveland Browns, and uh, Batto punched a guy in the back of the head. and Drilled him right oh, on university. Yeah, that's... We called him Ernie Badass, <laughs> except hey, on the football field. Ernie, every time he would say my name, he would, he would say, started with Ayo. Ayo Bates. <laughs> Ayo Bates. So I'm sitting in Hooters. <laughs> and I'm th this guy's from New, you know, New yes. Orleans, John Curtis, and I'm thinking, why not emphasize the buns? So when I when I graduate, uh, I want to open up a chain of restaurants called Battles Buns. <laughs> so anyway, so so Spurrier comes up to me. I'm, I hosted Batto and and uh and he came up to me he's like Batesy you hang around with Batto don't you yes sir 
Yeah, yeah, she will. Hey, you you need to calm down a little bit around him. He looks up to you, and he he needs to settle down a little bit. He's getting in too much trouble. All right, yes sir, yes sir. So sure enough, and Spurrier's never in the training room with us. So next day, I'm in the training room messing around with the trainers, and I look up, and there he is looking at me, just a scowl. He's mad at me. He's like, Batesy thought we talked about you calming down a little bit. And I said, uh, Yes sir, that was just around that though. He goes, Oh, you're right. Go ahead. <laughs> And I can't even begin to describe how fortunate I feel to have been a part of just one of his teams and, and what he had going on when he was at his prime right here. You know, it's a lot of people have, have won championships. A lot of people have come through and, and won national championships, as, as special as that is. They got cheated. I mean, that's nothing. Who cares about their national championship? <laughs> we won a national championship, and we had a blast doing it. I mean, we had the head ball coach that was that was leading the charge. I mean, and I'm not kidding. I honestly feel sorry for everybody that won a national championship, everybody else that didn't get to do it with Spurrier.